May the love and peace of the Lord be with us all, as we listen to today's Gospel and Reflection. Let us now listen to the Word of God. July 26, 2024 Memorial of Saints Joachim and Anne, Parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Listen, then, to the parable of the sower. With anyone who hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, evil comes and carries away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received the seed by the side of the road. Then whoever has received the seed upon a rocky place, this is one who hears the word and promptly accepts it with joy. But he has no root in himself, so it is only for a time, then, when tribulation and persecution occur because of the word, he promptly stumbles. And whoever has received the seed among thorns, this is he who hears the word, but the cares of this age and the falseness of riches suffocate the word, and he is effectively without fruit. Yet truly, whoever has received the seed into good soil, this is he who hears the word, and understands it, and so he bears fruit, and he produces, some a hundredfold, and another sixtyfold, and another thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection What distractions or worries hinder your ability to hear and understand God's voice in your life? The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred, or sixty, or thirtyfold. Matthew 13 verses 22 to 23. Today, Jesus clarifies for his disciples the meaning of his parable, told to the crowds. He explains the meaning of the seed sown on the path, on the rocky ground, among the thorns, and on the rich soil. Quoted above are the last two of those explanations. When we look carefully at the meaning of the seed sown into the rich soil, we see that these are those who hear, understand, and bear fruit. And the fruit that is born is in varying degrees. One thing that this parable tells us is that, hearing and even understanding the word of God, is not enough. There are many temptations we will face, that will hinder God's word in our lives. Let's briefly consider each. First, there are many people who have been blessed to hear the Word of God. There are many who have been to religious education classes, have been taught by parents and others, have attended church services, but have failed to allow what they have heard to penetrate deeply, to the point that they understand. To hear the Word of God is very different from understanding the Word of God. One reason for this is that, the pure word of God, when heard and understood, challenges us to the core of our being. If one truly understands God's word, then that person cannot remain indifferent. They must change. And they must change in a complete way. Failure to do so means, that it is impossible for good fruit to be born in their life, to the degree God wants. But understanding and changing is not even enough. This is because the enemies of our soul, traditionally spoken of as the world, the flesh, and the devil, will powerfully attack any person who receives the word of God and decides to abide by that word. For example, if you were to fully accept the teachings of Jesus regarding forgiveness of others, as soon as you make the choice to forgive, there would most likely be numerous temptations to abandon that practice. Pride, anger, hurt, the lies of the evil one, and the world, will all try to deter you from an act of complete forgiveness of others. Or take for example, the call to live completely detached from riches. Jesus' teachings on true spiritual poverty 
versus true spiritual riches require a depth of conversion that is difficult to obtain. Thus, the lure of riches is very hard to overcome. In the end, if your soul is truly fertile ground, and if you allow the most pure and complete teaching of the gospel to penetrate your soul, so as to change you in every way God wants to change you, then this means that you have overcome each and every temptation thrown at you. You have rejected the temptations that come from greed, pride, anger, and the like. You have embraced humility, rejected worldly esteem, dismissed anxiety and worry, and are directed only by the powerful, gentle, holy, and clear voice of God in your life. This requires much prayer, much interior purification, total dedication and unwavering obedience to the Word of God spoken to you both through the Gospels and in the depths of your conscience. And even among those who achieve this level of holiness, the fruit born in their lives is dependent upon how fully and habitually they live by the guiding Word of God. Reflect today upon this high calling from our Lord. Achieving the goal of having exceptionally rich soil in your heart, for the Word of God, requires unyielding commitment and determination. There are numerous temptations that will fight against the creation of a fertile heart. Try to look at your own heart today. Be honest. How fertile is it? Does the Word of God grow there? And if so, does it grow to superabundance? Commit yourself to the goal of becoming that rich soil in which the Word of God is sown that not only bears good fruit, but bears good fruit that is a hundredfold. Let us pray. My demanding Lord, you desire that every soul of every person you have created become the most pure and most fertile ground in which the seed of your word can grow and produce fruit in superabundance. Please help me to commit myself to this radical depth of holiness, dear Lord. My life is yours. Please purify me, change me, mold me, and produce in me an abundance of good fruit. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Gospel and Reflection. We hope that our small effort gave you a bit of inspiration as you journey your day with God. Please give us a like so this will reach to as many people as possible. Again, thank you and may God bless us all.